Hi there, welcome to the Scott Reed Project and today we are doing hair part two. Now some of you may have seen hair part one when I did that fantastic dish of pan roasted loin fillets. Today we are going to deal with these hefty big bat legs. And what we're going to be doing then is a stew. It's a take on jugged hair where you would normally thicken the sauce with some blood. We're not going to do that, just going to keep it nice and simple. So what we got then is our two hair legs which we shall butcher and take the meat off. Some nice lardens of smoked bacon. Some diced carrot, some diced swede, you can use turnips. I got some baby onions, what a ball like they were to peel but they're going to be worth it. Some beautiful fresh field mushrooms and some parsley. Then we're going to add some red wine and some stock and we're going to put it in the oven and stew for a couple of hours till it's you know tender you can cut it with a spoon it'll be fantastic so first thing we'll do then is we'll butcher those legs so I shall remove that beautiful plate of ingredients put it there just put our bacon there what we're going to do is take the meat off these bones simple just find that bone just get it on the camera so you can see it just gently get your knife underneath it down each side that's the one bone and what we do down that one side again knife needs to sharpen by the looks of it And there you have your boneless leg of hair. Some good meat on that. That's what I should do right here. Just into decent bite sized chunks. Just have a look at that. It really is a great meat. And that loin dish, like I said in my comments, it was one of the most finest dishes. I have ever eaten. So I shall bone out of that other leg and dice it and that's what we're looking for, pieces about that big. Right, we've got our meat diced, so what we need to do then is season it up. Easiest way for any stew, casserole, let's get yourself a little plastic bag. No measurements here, just a bit of flour, finest mustard powder known to man, let's put a bit of that in, put a bit more in, that'll give it a nice little kick, plenty of pepper, and then good old sea salt, get some of that in, give that a bit of a shuffle round, get your meat in, Give it a spin, keep a bit of air in, shake it around. And what this does, it obviously seasons, dries the meat up for frying and also helps to thicken that sauce, so it's got many uses. And what you do, shake off any excess in one foul swoop, all your meat is seasoned, ready to fry. How easy is that? Hey, how easy is that? Now this will be cooked all in one pot. First of all I'm going to add a good glug of olive oil. And as someone said in my comments, it's good to see it back and it's back again. A decent knob of butter. So I'll just put that on the front one so we can see what we're doing. Obviously that butter's melting. Just let it melt until, until it takes on a, a brown colour, what we call a bernoisette. Brown butter. What we do then, put our pieces in. Don't crowd the pan. Put them around the pan in a fashion 
like that they should all brown together as you've seen before so as it gets cooking you turn that one that one that one that one and you know where you are so that's bubbling away nicely in there and like I said exactly the same order you put them in you just go over and turn them off you know exactly where you are and they all cook at the same time that is a neat little trick and if you see sorry about this I'm not left handed but they will cook on that lovely colour and that's what we want and just fry a few at a time obviously you put a load in takes all the heat straight out of the pan do a few at a time we'll put it all on a plate and it will turn out scrumptious so as you can see in that pot then we've got a really good coloration on that hair and you know don't be scared if you take it a little bit darker than this it's not a problem all this is is to seal in all the juices but also when it's caramelized and you stew it down it all releases itself into the sauce and makes it nice rich and unctuous so there is all our hair out then in the same fat some nice pieces of smoked bacon and don't use the best stuff you know that cooking bacon you can get just use that and the pieces are ideal for something like this we'll get that in get some colour on that crisp it up and that will also release its smoky oil into the sauce so you're always building layers of flavour so that bacon is browned off nicely so that goes into our mix you can see it's all took on nice colour you can see juices there all have with the flavour and especially those caramelized bits at the bottom of the pan all makes it fantastic so into that now we're going to put in our carrots get rid of that parsley our baby onions and our swede and we're just going to cook these now for about 10 or 15 minutes so we take the heat right out of that pan and put a lid on give that 10 or 15 minutes just to sweat down no colour if you can help it so that's been 10 minutes and as you can see in there the only colour we've got on those vegetables is the lovely caramelised remnants of the meat so what we're going to do now is turn that heat up we're going to add a glug of red wine now I started using non-alcoholic red wine purely because if you were going to use wine in a dish the alcohol would burn off anyway so you're just left with the fruity flavours so I find this works just as good so what I'm going to do then I'm going to put some heat right under that and I want to simmer that until most of that wine disappears and all the vegetables have sucked it up suck it up man so that's sizzling away nicely in there then I'm just going to add a couple of dollops of tomato puree and those fantastic mushrooms I'm just going to cut up I'm going to add those in another one not being too fussy And all those flavours we're building all the time. That little stir around. So that wine is reduced nicely. If you look in there, it's got nice and thick. That's the base of our sauce, and that is going to be beautiful. So back in with our hair and our bacon, all the resting juices. Give it a bit of a mix up. No, we do some nice beef stock just enough to cover all that we're in a bag guess 
and then we'll bring that up to the boil our oven set to gas mark 3 have a look up there for the conversion and we'll get it in two hours maybe three hours all I know is that when we get this out it's going to be dark it's going to be beautiful so this bubbling cauldron of gamey goodness is ready to go in the oven like I said gas mark 3 for at least two hours maybe three you know until the meat's virtually falling apart and if you like what we've done here today so far at the Scott Reed project please subscribe share it like it I release a video every week let's put this baby to bed So my lovely stew has been in for three hours now and it looks nice, thick, warming. So have a look at that. You know the drill by now? Let's try a bit. I'm going to put it on this plate just purely so I can show you how it's cooked. This is not about presentation. So I've just chopped some fresh parsley, so I just put that on. But the main trick I want to show you is how this lovely hair is cooked right down that you can crush it with a fork. Let's take a bit. Let's have a go. Oh. I mean it's like the finest beef really that yet again it's a triumph a lovely winter warming stew thick rich unctuous mm. now there is several things you could serve with that do yourself some boiled potatoes some roast potatoes or some polenta but to be honest, something that good on a night like tonight, big bowl of that, some crusty bread, and that's all you need. It really is a fantastic dish, yet again. So it just remains for me to say, mm. thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and if you want to ask me any questions, follow me on Twitter, look up there, at the Scott Reed Project, and I'll answer as many as I can. So... That's the hair out of the way. Wonder what we'll do next week. Thanks for watching.